Hey guys, uh, this is going to be a video showing you how to run custom kernels on a DigitalOcean virtual private server. So this is a pretty good VPS provider. They have excellent service. The control panel is great. Uh, everything's pretty great except for the way that they set up their uh, boot sequence sort of for their uh, virtual machines. Uh, the way they do their virtual machines is with a partitionless disk which means that you can't have a bootloader on the virtual machine and uh, basically the result of that is the fact that you have outdated kernels all the time. And in fact you don't have control over your kernel if you install a different kernel on your machine it won't get used. They use their own and they load it from outside of your machine. So currently uh, the kernel they give you is 3.8.41. Uh, the current kernel in normal Arch is 3.9. Uh, so I'm going to do this demo showing you how to manually update it. Uh, we're going to need to do t a few things. Uh, one is install kexec tools. All right, and this is going to uh, kexec is basically a way to turn the active running kernel into sort of a bootloader. So you can have the Linux kernel perform bootloader-like functions, uh, and you can activate them from a running system. So it kind of gives us a way to hack together our own boot sequence. Uh, and then we're going to actually need to remove a package. Now, there may be a better way to uh, actually add our script in here, but this is just the way I chose to do it. Uh, and this is going to remove a couple things, like the reboot command is no longer available, uh, but you can d still do system control reboot, and I'll show you that later if, for uh, those of you who don't know. So, one notable thing that uh, systemd sysvcompat removes is slash sbin slash init. And uh, what that is, is it's actually the first shell script that gets run by the kernel in user land. So right now, if you re were to reboot, the uh, system wouldn't boot up. The kernel wouldn't know what to do. So we're going to actually drop our own shell script in there that does uh, what we want. And I have that shell script in slash temp. I'm going to copy that in here and then make it uh, executable. And here's just what's in it. Uh, essentially, this tells our running kernel to load this kernel with this init RAM disk and with these boot options. So, label equals root equals label equals do root is actually how DigitalOcean already boots their system. It tells the kernel to find the disk with this label and use that as the root system. Uh, and then what we added is init equals user lib systemd systemd, which is actually symlinked by slash sbin slash init in a default system. And then for safety reasons, we uh, remount root as read only. And then kexec tech e is basically the command that tells the kernel to immediately chain load the new kernel. And then down here is a follow through in case something goes wrong, uh, you will still be able to access the system through console. Uh, and I added these AND symbols at the end of the first two commands just so that if either one of these top two commands fails, it won't try to load the new system. So, so uh, at this point, we need to update the kernel. Uh, and they actually disabled kernel updates, but uh, you can re-enable them pretty easily. So they just added this uh, ignore package equals Linux and a big warning saying don't do exactly what I just did, which is remove it from the ignore package. Uh, hopefully what we're going to do here uh, will actually work. So the reboot command doesn't work anymore, but uh, you can still use system control reboot. 
and you can add scripts or whatever to reestablish the reboot command if you want but I usually don't bother so our system's rebooting and you'll actually see kind of a mini boot and then a reboot so here it was a little quick but if you saw it actually booted the first kernel and then it said loading new kernel and reboot it again okay alright so uh, it looks like it is still running 3.8.4-1 it turns out I didn't do a package update so it d didn't actually get the new kernel so now we're going to reboot again and see if it works Alright, so you'll see here uh, we have the 3.9 kernel and it's running and working fine. And uh, networking's up, modules are all working, and uh, we're SSH'd into it right now, so you know, there's how to get uh, updated kernels on an Arch machine. So this is completely unsupported and uh, you probably should keep backups of your data if you're doing this because there's always a chance that something may change will break it. But I use a similar hack to this on my VPS. Uh, it's a Debian machine and I'll probably be doing that next. But uh, yep, this is very useful especially on Arch to keep up to date with what Arch is actually supposed to be running. Uh, this is going to be the Debian version. Uh, so right now you can see we're running 3.2 and we're running uh, Debian 7 on uh, this VPS. This is the same machine. Now with Debian this isn't as big of a deal because uh, it's a lot more stable. The kernel updates aren't as uh, frequent but it's still kind of less broken to use the system running as it's designed to run so I usually do this on all my systems anyway now in this case we're actually going to be inserting a script into a really really early boot hook uh, temp rcs this is code that we're going to be adding and uh, the location where we can actually hook into the boot system is uh, etsy init.d and then rcs with a capital S. Okay. And we're going to just paste our code in here. Um, this is, to my knowledge, the first easy location to hook into the boot sequence in Debian uh, because slash sbin slash init isn't just a compatibility package that you can replace. So, but, but this works just as well anyway. So uh, here, essentially, uh, same thing, kexec load on Debian, slash vmlinus, and slash initrd.image are symlinks to uh, the current files that are uh, expected to be running. So that's a real nice convenience. Um, append root equals label equals do root, which is the same thing. Uh, and kexect. Now that's just something I added. Um, kexect is not anything that's recognized by the kernel or by any of the boot scripts. That's just for me. Uh, so up here, procmd line uh, is a text file that will tell you the command that was used to boot the kernel. And kexect, all that does is tell this script that if it's currently been 
run with kexec, then don't run it again. So basically, the first time it boots up, it will run this code, and the second time, it will just pass through to where it would normally go. Uh, so yeah, same thing, load the new kernel, remount root as read-only, and then go. So on uh, Debian, we need to also install kexec tools. And uh, now at this point, it should basically be running. Uh, to demonstrate this, I'm going to do something very silly and change the kernel to... Let's just do Debian 6. Okay, so now I can do a reboot. I'll do it again to see if we can see the uh, kind of double reboot. So it's shut down. Eh, we can see it. Okay, anyway. So, as you can see here, uh, we do have kexec in the command line, which means that we are running our own kernel. Uh, this is basically just a way to get updates and stuff that Linux is designed to have uh, and bypass the crappy boot system that they have in place on this uh, provider. They are a great w site and provider, except for this one thing, but uh, I think this is a very important uh, issue to know about because, well, it's a little bit broken. Uh, so, yeah, thanks, and uh, see you next time.